I remember we went to this unit, so we helped with the house cleaning. There was like potato. The uncle left it on the floor for so long, right, that the potato, it was already empty. <laughs> Yeah, so there was just cockroaches and the eggs inside. Yeah, so when we lifted it up, it was just the skin. So when we step inside, whatever the camps on you has six legs that can fly. Whoa, you can see like all the cockroaches just started like everywhere. And there was something like, like oh. Yeah. We got put in by Fion. Because you don't dare, but you dare make the cockroach everywhere flying around, you know. Then we got pushed in. <laughs> We're like, no, no, no. Hi, I'm King Guan. I'm 19 years old. I'm waiting to go for enlistment. Hello, my name is Wen Xian. I'm currently 19, waiting for university to start. And we are from Keeping Hope Alive as youth volunteers. Yes, we've been doing this for a few years now, actually. About three plus to four years. I was in SEC 3, so it was part of my Values in Action project. So like a local service learning project in school. Because one of our teachers was from Keeping Hope Alive, so we kind of got uh, connected from there. I was introduced to KSHA by one of my friends in secondary school. Because after my uh, overseas learning trip to Cambodia, we still had this uh, group chat. Right? She broke up to the whole group. Hey, any of you free uh, this Sunday want to go for an event or something? So I was like, oh, okay, let's go. <laughs> The first thing that I remember there was I heard this very loud woman, Fionn, the founder. I think she shouted for something, I don't remember what. Wow, <laughs> early morning, the residents all sleeping. <laughs> Before I came to Keeping Hope Alive, like I wasn't really exposed to a lot of rental units in Singapore. So most of my life, I think I've been living sort of in a bubble. So I think before that, I didn't really know that there's this part to Singapore though, that so many people are Unreached. I didn't really expect those households to be so cluttered and so unhygienic. There was this unit, so you actually cannot tell that it's a pest infested unit. Yeah, so the uncle does rag and bones, like a garanguni. So he brings like everything home, like fan. I think his house has like 10 fans or something. Before you step into the house, you can smell something, right? something very off-putting. But once you know you clean the house, you know the smell of cockroaches. The entire of the house is filled with plastic bags. Inside those plastic bags, you don't, don't know what's inside. Could be dead cockroaches, those eggs, anything. Then the person was stuck until, until the ceiling or something was... Oh, <laughs> it was overwhelming. <laughs> From the first furniture, we started moving out, right? Whoa, you can see like all the cockroaches just started... Like everywhere. And then there's... Rats. So I think from that unit, we got about 14 rats that day. I, I caught like 3 or 4 of the rats using you know, the net. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, only rats. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with rats, but cockroach channel. Uh. Actually quite cute. I got photos of it. I think what keeps me going is, I saw it as a way to humble myself. Yeah, to expose myself to the world. Lor. To see in a way that actually, yeah, I'm very fortunate already. And I think seeing how the whole thing came together, like to clean up, to sort, yeah, and the uncle has a clean bed to actually sit on. Seeing him sit on the clean mattress, well, I think that was like... Oh, just, uh, like, oh, it's, it's like all worth it. Uh, yeah. After being informed that Quidel is sponsoring like the test kits, right? We went down to their office to learn about how to like swap. When we learn, it's actually to learn about some things we can take note for. Tips like, you know, they sayang them on their head so that they feel more assured. I think why we decided to target on people with mobility issues is to actually realise that these people, they are not exactly mobile to move outwards to get themselves checked. Or like, it's not very convenient for them to, to move out of their units, especially if they are living alone and like, there's nobody helping them. So there's around 10 to 15 volunteers that came today with us. We decided to use the test kit ourselves first. Anything happen, we have to answer to them. We have to be accountable for our actions. So that, you know, we are assured that whenever we go out, we are safe. And like, we don't be the source of the virus law to them. So this morning, like with the help of Credel's representative and like uh, both me and King Guan, yeah, we actually got to teach the volunteers how to do the swap. To 
pass on the tips and tricks to them so that they know what to keep a lookout for. After we done finish our test, we began to split into two groups. We went to uh, those households uh, that want to get tested. Using Fidel's over-the-counter COVID test kit, within 15 minutes, you can get the results. Uh. Honestly, it wasn't tough. Uh. I think once you find the correct angle, the stick itself, you actually need to like poke in about like this much only. After coming to KHA, like being able to experience what it's like to be on the ground, to see like the lives of the people and like what they are going through exposed me to a lot more like situations that I probably wouldn't have encountered if I wasn't here. Like. I think the duty of the, those who can serve the nation should serve. Uh, could be any number of ways. So for us, keep your life. We go door to door to clean those houses, leave out stuff, and offer them if they want to change their lives or anything. So I think it's a way to contribute back to society by investing our time and energy by doing good. I think like through the years, right, like something I've learned is to treat people with dignity. Yeah, I think that's very important because it's not that, you know, just because they are living in rental flats, maybe they are like one tier lower than us. I mean, factually, they are in a lower social economic status. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that, you know, they are any different than any other human beings. The rich, the poor, you know, we are all like bleeding the same blood. So, I think the way we treat people, like, it ought to carry some sort of respect for each individual to actually assure them that your identity as a person, right, is not really based on your financial status or like where you are staying at. But I converse and I respect you as a human because of your position as an elder. Like how you respect your elders at home. That's like exactly how you can do that to the residents here also.